speed, power, and problem-solving abilities. These behaviors keep our whales active and engaged. SeaWorld's killer whales have inspired generations to care about our natural world, and today we're excited to share their story with all of you. Killer whales are the ocean's top predator. They use cooperation and communication, not just size and strength, to take their place at the top of the ocean's blood. At the bottom are small animals, like krill. At the top, the apex predator, the killer whale. behaviors provide an environment that is full of enrichment. We spend days, weeks, months, years building relationships with our whales. This creates trust, and that allows us to do some amazing things. For example, when you visit the doctor, you present your arm to draw blood, or step on the scale to see how much you weigh. It's much the same with our whales. Today, the still steer whales do behaviors together in unison. Synchronizing their movements and working as a team strengthens their social bonds and helps make them the ocean's top predator. Their scientific name is Orsinus orca, but they're more commonly known as killer whales. Our five whales all have their own names. Their names are Katina, Nalani, Malia, Trua, and Makaya. Makayo is our youngest whale at nine years old, and our oldest is Makayo and Nalani's mom, Katina. She's 44 years old. Katina is the matriarch or leader of our pod. Our whales trust us, and they take an active role in their own health and well-being. Through positive reinforcement training techniques, we teach them husbandry or healthcare behaviors. One of the first things that we teach our whales to do is called a fluke present, where they present their tail flukes to a trainer. We'll demonstrate with our two boys, Trua and Mikhail, here in the slide out. Not only does a fluke present allow us to get a great look at their entire body, but it also gives us access to blood vessels, which are very easy to see on the white underside of their tail flukes. Our veterinarians collect a voluntary blood sample at least once a month from our whales, and the whales are taught to stay calm and relaxed throughout. This afternoon, you can see that Leah and Amy are giving the whales a nice tail rub. They have very sensitive skin, and this is a great way for us to reinforce exceptional behavior and for us to build our relationships with our killer whales. Now, blood samples are just one way that we can make sure that our whales are staying healthy. Another important diagnostic is weighing the killer whales. We weigh them twice a month, and we're able to do that by asking them to slide their bodies up and out of the water onto a killer whale size scale that we have in one of our adjacent pools. We'll demonstrate in the slide out today. Mikhail on the right is our littlest guy. He weighs about 3,800 pounds. True on the left is our biggest guy. He weighs about 6,000 pounds and is still growing. But you'll notice that the portion of their body from their dorsal fin to their tail flukes is in the water right now. It's a very strong part of their body called the peduncle and it weighs several hundred pounds. So with that in the water, we wouldn't get an accurate weight. To solve that problem, we simply ask the whales to lift their tails up and out of the water. And this way, we can make sure that our younger whales continue to grow and our adult whales maintain a healthy body weight. And the care isn't just physical. Mental stimulation and play are vital. We surprise and engage with our whales in every opportunity. Play is how killer whales teach their young to hunt. For the adults, play is important too. It seems that they just enjoy having fun. But making time for play is an important part of life for killer whales and for us. Hey guys, I'm over here on the left hand side of the stadium. Observational learning and mimicry play a critical role in the life of a killer whale. From the moment they're born, they learn necessary life skills by watching and playing follow the leader with their moms 
and other whales, and our whales play ball with the leader with us too. So we're going to put that to the test with all of you folks here today. All right, I want everyone in front of me, if you're comfortable, stand up. Stand up. All right, we chew a little bit over here, so he's more in the center. Perfect. All right, we're going to do something with our bodies. We're going to see if Truett can watch and copy you, okay? All right, on the count of three, I want everybody to march in place. When you march in place, I want you to get your knees up really high so he can see you, okay? Truett, watch all them. All right, one, two, three, march in place. March, 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 march. And they got it. Good job. Good job, everybody. Have a seat. Very nice. So you can see he is paying very close attention to you. They are super curious animals. Our wheels frequently can be seen spy hopping or even jumping completely out of the water to get a better view of their surroundings or while they're playing. We'll demonstrate that with a behavior called a sighting bound. It's going to be a jump on stage. All right, when he jumps, let's give him a cute round of applause. Very nice. Very nice. All right, we're going to take this party over to the right-hand side of the stadium. Now, that was a pretty cute little jump that Truett did at stage, but I think that we can do one bigger and better. We are going to do a breach behavior with little Makai over here. So everyone on the right-hand side, stand up. You remember the signal I taught you? Two fingers out. On the count of three, we'll swipe them up to the sky. One, two, three, swipe! And nothing happened. <laughs> All right, put your hands down. Let's try it one more time. Two fingers out. One, two, three, swipe! And you got it that time. Nice job. You guys can have a seat. Now, the coyotes can do a behavior called a breach. This is how killer whales communicate with each other. It's their way of making their presence known and saying, of the killer whales in our care has shed light on many of the mysteries about these amazing animals. For example, we know that the gestation period of our pregnant killer whale is about 17 months. That's information that would be impossible to obtain out in the wild. Some information, though, can only be gained through field observation. That's when SeaWorld works with our partners, like the Norwegian Orca Survey and NOAA, to further our knowledge. Killer whales are powerful animals, and perhaps the best example of that power that we've seen is when they hunt. Killer whales stand apart. They have no natural predators, and just about any other ocean animal could be their dinner. Depending on where they live and their chosen prey, they develop some epic hunting techniques. Off the coast of South America, killer whales will teach themselves riding in on waves just long enough to catch prey. They'll also create waves that knock animals like penguins or seals from ice waves. Most importantly, they cooperate, communicate, and coordinate as a team. Here's footage of killer whales corralling a school of herring. A whale dips in and feeds, while the other whales keep the fish together with spikes of their tail fins. So killer whales create waves to hunt, and they use their tail flukes to stun prey. Here's a demonstration. For our whales, it means a fun activity session, but for all of you, it's time to get wet.
They can eat several hundred pounds of food every day. In the wild, their diets vary depending on where they live and the time of year. Unfortunately, overfishing, pollution, and other factors are having a serious impact on some killer whale populations. Killer whales are impressive animals. It's pretty obvious why they're the top predator in the ocean. That means killer whales are invincible, right? Still being written, and there are simple things we all can do to make a difference.